Let me ask you a question. Have you ever wondered what goes on inside the mind of an artist? How would you unbox it, make it accessible? But can we really get inside the mind of another? Or is it just the reflection of ours? Here at Stack Museum for Kunst in Copenhagen, we're going to look at the exhibition Unboxing Goody Pal, objects from his imagination to stimulate ours. I am William Harvey Hayes, and this is Art Talks. My name is William Harvey Hayes, and I have always had an interest in art. I discovered that I have atypical autism, which has been a problem most of my life. But by interpreting art, I found that I could use my autism as a strength. I realised I was able to find meaning in the colours, shapes, motives, light and composition of whatever artwork I was exposed to, almost as if the art was talking to me. Therefore, I created Art Talks, a programme where I use my autism to interpret all kinds of art which I come across without being an expert and I want to take you on a journey through art, experiencing it with me and encouraging you to do the same for yourself because art should be for everyone. In this season we're going to take a look at some of the biggest art institutions of Denmark. Welcome to Art Talks. Just a short distance from Copenhagen city centre is a place to relax, with visitors from Denmark and around the world. Historical buildings, open parkland. This is where you will find Denmark's National Gallery of Art. For children and parents, young and old, it is a place where everyone can find something, not just in the gallery, but also in the parkland around it. Denmark's national art collection had its origins in royal art collections. Unfortunately, Christenborg Palace, where this was housed, burnt down in 1884. Fortunately, most of the art was saved and it resulted in the building of this building here, Stapp's Museum for Kunst. Germanic art meets Italy, the Baltic meets the Mediterranean, a Roman building for Scandinavia, Roman proportions expressed in a Danish building. The Romans never got to Denmark, but the architecture did. Theatre area where you can take a break, a cafe to refresh you and give energy, and guards who can help you find your way. Many different kinds of people enjoying the facilities. Take time to see the building, which is a work of art in itself. Denmark's art treasures for all to see and share modern art and medieval art, contemporary art and renaissance art, housed in a building that gives you space to appreciate its various forms. The European Gallery starts with medieval religious art, art with a purpose, art with a message. It might be unfamiliar to some of us today, but it is still meaningful. It moves to renaissance art, religion, classical scenes, food, symbolic lessons given us something to contemplate. Nationalism, gender politics, classical culture all have their role and expression. Europe's development is reflected in its art. Art becomes more secular, social and political topics, but still addresses questions of life and meaning. We see the emergence of modern art, the personal and political replaces religion, a message for us to find and make relevant to ourselves. Moving on to the smaller yet still significant French gallery, we find art from a selection of artists active in France between 1900 and the 1930s, a period of new approaches to art and creativity, valvish paintings and ceramics with bright colours. Picasso was influenced by African masks and then others followed. Faoism and Cubism emerged in a cosmopolitan world. We find bright colours of clear figures give way to dark Cubist paintings, Cubist sculpture leaving us to reform shapes if we wish to do so. Human figures that seem to be expressing sexual freedom and movement. Not just painting but sculpture and ceramics, all of which we find here. Danish and Nordic art. Art for the aristocracy, royalty and landed gentry. 
those who could afford it and had a wall or house big enough to display it, art showing status and place in society, paintings displaying their land, the source of their wealth and clothing showing rank by painters who had been employed to immortalise their patrons. Art of the few displayed for the few, showing power, wealth and pride, being expressed through paintings and sculptures, now open for the once excluded, strangely enough, those who might have financed it. The Golden Age, with a tour of Italy, a new national consciousness and identity, small paintings more affordable and will fit in a flat or middle-class house. Art can still look back, but mostly shows Danish daily life. Art becomes more realistic, showing the reality of industrialization and urban life. Skin paintings feature fisher folk and domestic life, everyday life and the European view of the exotic. Nationalism, Darwinism, secularism, but still a place for God. The bridge links the old building with its classic architecture with the new building in the same way SMK spans the history of art. You can cross over time with the diverse collections found at SMK. In a moment I will be interviewing Goody Powell and Hassan from the Banana School. The Banana School worked with Goody Powell in producing art. We will be talking about the current exhibition that is upstairs. But first, let's take a look at the new wing, designed by Anna Maria Indiro, a modernist building with high white walls, clear bright light and expansive spaces, giving a sense of freedom and openness, art of various kinds, a reflection of its time and culture, themes like feminism and social progress, lines delineating shapes, swirls bring chaos to draw us in, pulling me into the room where I find structure, order in chaos, beauty in the unfamiliar, and I am challenged to contemplate and think about the new. I must read the meaning and search for its message. Even contemporary art is separated from me by time and context, but I can bridge the gap. Modern and contemporary art are not limited by time, they are in the now, but draw on the past and look to the future. We can find the many journeys they have made to get here. The past can be found in the present. Classical statues for the modern world, religious paintings for a secular world. As time is freed, so are the materials used and how they are applied. Faces emerge and oil hangs, but not in lamps. A god relaxes instead of standing, and I am drawn upstairs. I feel directed to see what I can find. I make an hospital visit. I go inside to experience and realise a work. I am silent, manipulated by what I find there. I can feel the tension that's not really there. I try talking to my friend, but of course there is no response. Nobody responds. It is artificial, trying to unbox what is in front of me. We're now leaving the new wing to take a look at the current exhibition, Unboxing Goody Pal. Unboxing the Goody Pal collection, artifacts or the artist. The feel of the texture of the carpet is relaxing after concrete floors. The colour calms me. I am ready to enter and see what has been unboxed. I hope to see inside the artist. Bells are familiar and bring back memories of sound from my childhood. But the cables and electronic devices disturb them. They are unknown. The old and the new have different meanings. 
the time was different. A music box stored sound or music to be played. A big metal bell has potential to play music. A water sculpture relaxes me. The flow and shape stop my memories. There is sound to listen to. In fact, it is part of the experience. Time is a theme we encounter while it passes as we make our way through. Welcome, Gordy Pal. Would you please like to introduce yourself? My name is Paul Christian Bjorn Vesta, and we are at the National Gallery because we have an exhibition called Unboxing the Gordy Pal Collection. Because what I usually is nowadays is I'm a collector of um, artworks that nobody else will take care of. And now we have unboxed it here at the National Gallery. So I'm a collector of artworks that nobody else takes care of, but I'm also the janitor here at the museum at the moment. I work as not as a paid janitor, but I'm the janitor because nobody else can unpack these works and then I unpack them and unfold them. So it's kind of a janitor work, I would say. And this is Hassan. And Hassan, would you like to say a few yeah. things about yourself? Uh, I am just a uh, migrant come here and then I, um, I meet with them, these guys. So I like their work, they are creative. So then I also start was to do something with them so also join their team. Oh, thank you very much. So welcome both of you. Now when I look in your, in your exhibition I see it's got lots of objects but it's about sound. So how do the objects relate to sound? Yeah that's a good question. Uh, the museum wanted a sound art uh, exhibition uh, because they think that that is what I'm collecting, but I've collected everything uh, which I think is somehow performative. So some of it is uh, work that uh, that you unfold and it makes a sound. Some of it is uh, something that in my in my mind relates to sound. Maybe it's a score or it's a it's a drawing or it's a, even a painting that I somehow think it relates to sound in that respect. But um, I'm a collector of, of uh, a lot of things which is. Um, which uh, makes sense to me, but for a lot of people, might not make. Uh, might, might, they might not see the the link. But we try to make the link here. But it is a. I would say everything in in the exhibition is uh, is uh, either made to perform sound, or made to uh, uh, to picture sound, or made to uh, enroll sound, or record sound, or document sound, or uh, or in uh, uh, yeah. So basically, every uh, all the objects in there somehow deals with uh, documentation of sound, or uh, what you could call. Uh, scores for performing sound which then could be documented later. Yeah. That's interesting because in the first room I saw lots of bells like for bell ringing so, so it's, it's, it's curious to me because I always think of bell ringing as being a very British thing. Where, where did you encounter bell ringing? Uh, that's the British thing uh, indeed and uh, that came from uh, from my fascination with uh, with mathematics and also I was uh, working uh, for a little while I tried to uh, um, uh, what do you call it? In, a, in a bell foundry I tried to make bells myself okay. so that's why it started but uh, yeah it's uh, I mean uh, chain ringing is a very pretty thing uh, it's hardly it's, it's pretty unknown in in this parts of the world I don't know about Pakistan do you have this kind of uh, bell ringing yeah, where? they have something like that, but um, it's a little, uh, it's different a little bit here. So it's uh, many things different here. He's doing something new. So um, I think uh, some also something old, something, you know, it's a mix, mixture here. I move from one room to another. I leave behind ideas and experiences. Artifacts have been unboxed and they have unboxed my memories. The lines I see make me think of circuit boards, wiring, connections in my brain, nodes and interconnections carry impulses, create sensations, actions and reactions. An internal map of meaning are ways of interpretation and realisation of reality. Music, sounds stored in LPs, some are familiar, some are unknown, mysteries of sound, computer games, old technology and more albums waiting to be heard. I can read the sleeves, look at the pictures, but the sound remains locked away. I see one that I know and hear it in my memory as my circuits are activated. One of the rooms has what looks like a big circuit diagram. Yeah. And when I look at that, I've got a duality going on in my mind. It's two things I'm f flashing between. One is that it's kind of a circuit board. And the other is that it's my brain, the wiring in my brain, and the nodes are like synapses. Yeah. Because our brains are actually electrochemical f f organs. <laughs> so that kind of, kind of blurs this line between mechanical music and uh, 
any kind of music. Does it? Oh, for sure, yeah, yeah. And that's interesting also because uh, that room was meant to be. Um, uh, a lot of people, when they talk about uh, intelligence, uh, they always say that uh, that a network that is complex yeah. enough will have intelligence by itself, which is an interesting question because if if that is the case, what about the water supply network? That's more advanced than a lot of uh, well, that's, uh, a lot of people live with water, but not with uh, computers. So, for example. Be, uh, people like to say the internet will be intelligent at some point. The water supply network shouldn't be intelligent. So not intelligent is also about what you're willing to accept as intelligent, because most people, when I say these kind of things, would say water supply network is not intelligent, neither is the electricity network, and so on. So um, there's a lot of networks, uh, traffic lights, things like that, but we don't apply any intelligence to these. But if uh, complexity in itself um, is so advanced that it creates, it creates intelligence, we have to accept that there's a million intelligences around us, because Everything, uh, everything that is connected somehow will then be able to, uh, to create. The final space I find myself in as a red device that vibrates and follows a cycle. It is made of wood but controlled by electronic wiring, its brain and vibration, its sound. I wait in expectation to see what will happen. Bell-like that unites me with the first space. The plates ring out old sound in a new form. The machine's voice stops, gradually comes to rest. The vibrations dissipate and the sound floats away. Not waiting for the next cycle, I let it sleep and turn to the large cylindrical cloth. Entering, I am surrounded and find the pattern beautiful, copper in material, forming patterns that wave through the air. I feel engulfed the patterns are like sound waves. I turn to follow them, circling round to appreciate the whole. It is soothing, but incomplete. It is a musical instrument, and the copper reacts to a player wearing copper gloves. Electricity. Electromagnetic waves make sound waves. I must return to hear them. The shower curtain, yeah. Well, because it's not a shower curtain, it's an instrument. It's an instrument, yeah. And I could, looking at it closer, I could see there's copper inside it. It's actually quite beautiful in itself. Yeah, yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a, uh, yeah, it's a, what do you call it, vevel? What is the thing? Uh, the English uh, fretted? What do you call it? Uh, woven? Woven, Wo yes, yeah, yeah. It's a, yeah. It's a woven uh, piece by wool and copper, and uh, it's also uh, um, a write out of um, the Weber fool, the, I don't know what the, the, word, what the name for that bird is in English, but it's a bird that woves as well. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's uh, the song of that one, there's, there's a, the, it's a diagram of that, that uh, the song from that. From that. And it's a, it's a very interesting piece because you're both, uh, it's, a, it's also, it's a, it's a cable, you could say. It can transmit from, I yeah. mean, there's connection all the way through, so yeah. it's a, but you can also be inside the cable and you can also, like, um, you can also, so you basically create a new elect electric uh, field which, uh, which shields you from other electric fields but you can also uh, it, so it can also work uh, it also works a bit as a receiver for electric signals but it also sends out an electric signal if you amplify it or if you put electricity into it so uh, marie louise anderson who, would, who made that piece uh, wanted to do it as an experiment experiment and basically experiment with it and she hadn't really figured out exactly what it is but it's a beautiful piece um, of uh, of a, of a fabric I, <laughs> for now at least and she plays it every day and she f tries to figure out what it can do and it can do quite a lot so I would say. To try and come here when she's playing it uh, I think she probably later on today yeah. actually to be honest with you but let's see let's see well so I'd just like to thank both of you I, I, I would like to shake your hands but of course yeah. we, we can't yeah. do so we we do some kind of <laughs> kind of <laughs> so signal yeah there's many signals sent but uh, yeah there's many signals sent but uh, we do a lot this Signal, Depends who it is, but yeah. not, you, not you two. That's that's pretty good. It's been a pleasure talking with you. Pleasure talking to you as well. Yeah. We have experienced the work of Goody Pal. We've looked inside the mind of an artist. Has this unpacking helped you find the answers to your questions? Have you found new ones? Come and unpack it for yourself. The museum sleeps now, all is quiet. Come and experience it for yourself, but make sure you come when you are awake and it is open. I am William Arthur Hayes and this has been an art talk. <laughs>